Welcome everyone to yesterday's NBA news from the 4th of August 2024. And we have Killian Tilly news. That's where we're at in this offseason. Obviously the Olympics went on as we finished the group stages of the women's tournament and all quarterfinals are set now with the men's tournament obviously having their quarterfinals tomorrow. We've talked about those yesterday if you want to hear about those and the women's quarterfinals happening on uh, Wednesday, which uh, all should be really fun without a doubt. Really excited about that. In the meantime, if you want to watch some ball, uh, the three on three tournament is continuing and they have some elimination games today. So that's the basketball in the Olympics today. Let's talk about the rumors first, though. So the Warriors and the 76ers are interested in Killian Tilly. Um, he was drafted or he played with the Grizzlies back in 2019 and 2020. He appeared in 54 NBA games and didn't do him, you know, that well for himself. Shot just 31% from the three point line, which was his biggest strength coming out of uh, Gonzaga, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, out of college, that's that's the thing. And he is six foot nine, uh, six foot ten ish. Um, Recovered, recovered from injuries throughout the last two years because he has not been playing, obviously. He had a back surgery, apparently, and the thing with him is that he's lengthy, obviously. Fits the mold of a modern power forward on a or a center, in a way. And shot 44% from, three point, from the three-point line in college, even though it was uh, on limited attempts. It still was 44% from three. And he's apparently really athletic, but obviously who knows how athletic he is since he had so many injuries apparently and he was he's recovering from a back injury, right? Or from a back surgery. So um, those are the biggest news of today. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. I don't know how this makes sense for the Warriors since they drafted Quinton Post, unless they were already like, okay, we've seen enough and we don't want him, even though he really impressed at least, you know, me or i would say generally impressed in the summer league so um maybe just as a power forward another hey i don't know what the warriors want to do but we know that Lori markanen is very unlikely and they will be headed into the season with a very with a very very questionable roster let's just put it and <laughs> we'll see what the hell happens there right as uh some other rumors were where some other rumors were floating around the internet also as DeAndre Ayton is expected to be traded or that the Blazers and DeAndre Ayton are expected to part ways uh, whether it is this season or the next season I don't know but it appears to be sometimes throughout this season so who could take a flyer on DeAndre Ayton I mean if I'm the Warriors I would try it honestly but maybe it is just stupid because of DeAndre Ayton's motor and stuff but I don't know man I mean a center is a center and he's still very skilled and he can do his thing even though he obviously has his issues um, so yeah DeAndre Ayton and the Blazers it will not work out there we'll see what the hell the Blazers will do right the rumors about Jeremy Grant have been there the rumors that either him or Anthony Simons will be gone and now DeAndre Ayton, so we'll see what the hell happens, maybe they want to just uh, have the worst roster possible so they can get Cooper Flag and it will be Scoot and Flag, right? Um, that would be actually really fun, so um, that's how it's looking right now there. And Marcus Morris sweepstakes, yes, they call it Marcus Morris sweepstake because, I mean, it's obviously funny and on Twitter everyone will be like, sweepstakes? Lomau and, you know, having the Pops guy and everything like that. Uh, it's between the Sixers and the Cavaliers, which makes sense. We'll see what happens. Obviously, it's not that big of a deal, let's be honest. And Jonas Valanciunas uh, is expected to be traded from Washington when eligible. They signed him this offseason and there is already a rumor or at least a, or a report or whatever you want to call it that he will be traded when eligible, which is sometimes in December. So, I mean, hey, Washington signed him and they'll trade him for some assets. Shit, why not, right? Why not? They had the money. You have to spend some, actually, right? I'm pretty sure even in the NBA now. Uh, so, you know, shit, why not, right? They can acquire something good or at least maybe a small, you know, young asset or maybe a draft pick uh, for a team that's desperate for a center. Hey, good deal by Washington if that's what's going to happen, but still a funny, funny thing nonetheless. And in the Olympics, the women's group stage are done, like I said. Belgium destroyed Japan 85-58 as they needed to because 
uh, they just had to win big if they were to secure a quarterfinal spot, no matter what happened in the other matchups. And that's what they did. They absolutely dominated. Emma Mieseman is uh, a true specimen, man. She's, she's just incredible. And Belgium just did their thing. They were locked in from the start. They played with a great intensity. Shots was falling. Emma Mieseman, like I said, was doing her thing. And that's what you need to see and that's what you like to see. The Nigeria beat Canada 79-70, which, I mean, not unexpected, right? But still an incredible story for Nigeria. They did not win at the Olympics for 20 years. Now they're headed to the quarterfinals to play the US nonetheless. And they played well. Canada, a really disappointing tournament, just didn't have it. No matter the talent on the roster, they just weren't great. They just weren't great. And the guard play wasn't great. And they just didn't have chemistry, it felt like. Um, then the US team defeated Germany 87-68 after a great start from Germany from Fiebig and Satu Sabali. Uh, Germany was, you know, started to turn it over a lot. The US adjusted to the physicality even better and Germany just couldn't keep up with the offensive talent that the US have. Uh, the turnovers really killed them. They also, you know, relied way too much on individual play, obviously. Uh, while, you know, shooting a lot of three-pointers, they won the three-point battle by one, they lost the turnover battle by like, what was it, like eight or something like that. It was a huge difference in turnovers and in assists, they had like 11 less assists, they had just 14 assists on the night. So, uh, I mean, obviously still a really great performance so far by Germany, but uh, not enough for the US. We'll see if the other Sabali sister returns for the quarterfinals and maybe they can surprise them eventually, but still US just doing their job at the end of the day uh, even though the guards still have not been like great uh, then Australia defeats France 79-72 that's to me was an, a huge up, a huge upset uh, but Australia did it they obviously secured the quarterfinal spot for themselves also and that set us for the quarterfinals which will be Serbia against Australia don't know who to pick there a leaning Serbia right now but should be a fun matchup that's the first matchup on Wednesday. The second matchup on Wednesday is Spain versus Belgium. So Spain obviously had a really good uh, group stage play and they get Belgium in return. Kind of tough if you ask me, but um, I'm really excited about that matchup. Should be fun. Belgium obviously having that momentum of making it through. Not, on, not only that they did not have to rely on other teams failure, but they did it by themselves in that one game against Japan or in this game against Japan, right? They just secured it for themselves by themselves and uh, they're against up to uh, up against the great Spain, Spain team, which should be fun. Then Germany against France. Uh, that's uh, another really interesting matchup. Uh, Germany obviously has, I would say, the bigger star power in a way, but and they've played... Um, better offensive basketball in a way, but France has played really well defensively. Uh, offensively, they've been ex ex essentially consistent with the way, uh, you know, the offense has been going. So uh, another intriguing matchup and the only matchup that you don't expect it to be competitive is US against Nigeria, because of course it's the US, <laughs> you know, you expect them to be a little competitive, at least against Belgium, probably, uh, or maybe Germany in a rematch. Maybe the other teams could, but uh, I mean against Nigeria, it would be a great story, but uh, I'm rooting for it. I don't see it happening. And those are the news from yesterday's NBA, WNBA and Olympic world. As um, yeah, hopefully we get some more news uh, happening still, because there are still a lot of pieces to be, um, you know, to fall in the off season market. And then we'll get to, you know, uh, previewing the teams for the next season, which I'm really excited about. I'm, I'm can't wait for that. We'll be doing one team a day, probably. Uh, I don't know how. Probably by the conferences or something like that. And we'll talk about the players. We'll talk about expectations. We'll talk about uh, what they did in the off season and they didn't do, and just kind of go over all these things. And then we'll go into some basketball history. Also, even if I finally, uh, you know, um, that's what I want to do. Anyway, thank you all. Thank you all for listening. Be kind to yourself and to others as always. And be gentle with yourselves. Just be. That's it.